For our next speech in the class, we're going to start going over the informative speech. So the informative speech is going to be a little bit tougher. You're going to kick it up an extra notch, but it's one of the best speeches because you folks get to do my job. You get to teach me something new. And every semester, there's always a handful of students that end up teaching me something new, something that I brag about to all my other professor friends and put up on social media because you folks are that cool. <laughs> Now, for your informative speech, when you're constructing the outline, uh, a couple of extra things are going to be added to it. So we're still going to start off with an attention grabber. So you're still going to have a joke, a statistic, a story, a quotation, or maybe even a question in a particular situation. So I was thinking for the example, just a couple of days ago, Trump you know, tested positive for COVID-19, was flown to Walter Reed Medical Center. So I might start off by asking you folks, how many of you folks got a text message from one of your friends saying, Trump has COVID? <laughs> I don't know about you, man, but everybody was hitting me up on that. So now after we grab the attention of the audience in this particular situation with a question, now we add a new step. We're going to add in what we call audience analysis, and we're going to talk about this in chapter 11. In the audience analysis stage, you're going to ask yourself the question, why is this topic important to me? Or more importantly, why is it important to you folks? Why is this topic something that you should continue to listen to? Well, I would probably put point to his latest tweet where he has that video of him saying, I feel great, life is good, don't fear the virus, don't let it dominate you, right? Uh, because he says he wants to make all of the treatments that he had at Walter Reed Medical Center available to everybody inside of the United States. Pretty important. So now if you catch COVID, hey, you might be taking monoclonal antibodies. <laughs> So after you've established a rapport with the audience, they're listening to you because they're interested in it because it affects them in some kind of way, then you want to establish your credibility. So we've talked a lot about ethos, and in public speaking, it's important for you to establish your ethos or your credibility as early as you can. You want to set a high bar showing the audience that you've done your homework, that you've researched your topic area, that you're going to teach them something new, something more than they get by just doing a basic Google search. So I went upstairs and did a Google search. <laughs> but uh, let's say I want to use, uh, according to Sarah Cliff, an investigative reporter for the New York Times on October 7th of 2020, just two days ago, right? She notes in her article, how much would Trump's coronavirus treatment cost most Americans? And she states that President Trump spent three days in the hospital. He arrived and left by helicopter and he received multiple coronavirus tests oxygen, steroids, and an experimental antibody treatment. For someone who isn't president, that would have cost more than $100,000 in the American healthcare system. So now that I've established my credibility with some research that I found out there in the real world, now it's time to preview my areas of analysis. Now remember, for all of you folks, the thesis statement is going to be different. It depends on your topic area. You know, if you're doing an event that happened in the past, you might talk about the past, the, the present of that particular event, and then what happened after it, or the future of that event. Or you might have a spatially organized speech, where you're talking about the right side of something, the left side of something, and the top of something. You know, it's all dependent upon your topic area. In this particular scenario, I'd probably pick a topical area, since Trump had three major types of uh, of remedies or therapeutics uh, during his COVID uh, treatment. So I'd probably say uh, the new developments in COVID-19 vaccines are of extreme importance to our lives. In order to better understand how these work, we must look at first remdesivir, the antiviral drug that Trump was taking, uh, second monoclonal antibodies, the Regeneron treatments that he got after he got, went to Walter Reed Medical Center, and then finally uh, dexamethasone, that uh, steroidal treatment that he's on right now. Now after we move into the body of the speech, uh, we're gonna have a lot of repetition here. So body point number one always starts off with a topic sentence. Remember every major body point has to have a topic sentence just like every good essay always has a topic sentence, one statement that sort of summarizes or introduces us to the later pieces of evidence that you're going to use to justify your claims. So for this, we probably have a topic sentence of, well, the antiviral drug remdesivir has shown to be effective in COVID-19 trials. 
then I'd back it up with some evidence, right? So you can use quotations, you can use stories, you can use statistics, you can use examples, you can use anecdotes, anything is pretty much available to you. Uh, and the, most of the time you usually probably use some sort of quotation or a stat or a graph, but it's really up to you. Uh, in this particular scenario, let's say we want to quote that same Sarah Cliff person again. Uh, she says that the remdesivir treatment uh, that was created by Gilead costs $3,120 per treatment. Jeez, I wish I would have invested in that company but a couple of months ago. <laughs> uh, so after that, and then this doesn't necessarily always have to be the C sub point, by the way. You want to put speaking cues throughout your speech. So after you're done with the rough draft of your outline and you're practicing it, you want to go back in and put in, take a dramatic pause, use a visual aid. You know, you want to add, litter in these speaking cues throughout the body of your speech. After you're done sort of backing your topic sentence up with evidence, then of course you want to have a good transition. So now that we talked about the antiviral drug remdesivir, let's now turn to the monoclonal antibody treatment that Trump received by the name Regeneron. So now we're going to move into Roman numeral number three, body point number two. Now we're going to have a topic sentence where we say Regeneron is a new clinical trial a monoclonal antibody treatment that is showing promising results with regards to COVID-19 patients. And then I want to back it up with some evidence, some quotations, stories, statistics, examples. Um, in this scenario, uh, I printed up a cool little visual aid, right? So here's a visual aid of how a monoclonal mo antibody works. First, uh, you infect a rat, and then it, you take out its spleen, and then you mix that spleen with some myeloma cells, and then that creates some hybrid lomas. <laughs> and then you put those into a Petri dish, and then eventually you pull out the monoclonal antibodies that attach to the S spike proteins on the outside of the coronavirus virus. <laughs> now, after you're done showing that visual aid or whatever supporting proof you're gonna use, another transition. So now that we've talked about monoclonal antibodies developed by Regeneron lately, Let's now turn to, and now we're gonna to move to our third point, and then this will become a V or a four. And again, we're gonna have another topic sentence. The final treatment that we'll discuss with COVID-19 is dexamethasone, the steroidal treatment that Trump is currently on. Then I wanna back this up with some evidence or some quotations. Uh, you know, if you want to, in my particular scenario, I looked up the WebMD, all the different side effects that have been all over the media. So dexamethasone, according to WebMD, can cause a range of side effects from blood clots to headaches to blurred vision to aggression, agitation, anxiety, irritability, and even depression. Whew, that's a laundry list there. <laughs> Um, again, I might throw in some speaking cues, maybe a picture of dexamethasone because it's been around for a long time, or some other quotations from people in the field that have talked about it being used as a treatment for other problems, you know, rheumatoid arthritis or other areas that need steroids. Now, at the end of my last point here, you can, this is kind of optional if you want to, have a transition to your conclusion. So from dexamethasone, let's wrap it all up or something like that but you don't have to. You can just go straight into your conclusion. So you move into your conclusion. Remember, you wanna restate your main points. Today, we've looked at the new remedies for COVID-19 that Trump recently took by first taking a look at remdesivir, second, by looking at monoclonal antibodies and Regeneron, and finally, taking a look at dexamethasone, the, different type, the new steroidal drug or the old steroidal drug that he's been on for a while now. Um, then, of course, you want to end with some kind of bang. So this, of course, is creative. You can do whatever you really want to. You can go big. I got COVID. <laughs> or you can go small. I really think this virus is the worst thing ever. But uh, you could end with, like, let's say a quotation, which I choose to do here. Uh, so the biggest thing is, is that it could be worse. According to Chris Sloan, a principal advisor for the Avalari Innovation Group, in his article, COVID-19 hospitalizations projected to cost up to $17 billion in the United States on June 19th of 2020, the top end cost for hospitalization for a serious case of COVID-19 could cost up to $144,000. So I guess Trump got a pretty decent deal. <laughs>